Hey guys, my name is Ashley and welcome to my very first poker vlog. I am so excited to make this. I've been wanting to make a poker vlog for probably four or five years now. Whenever Andrew Nimi's first vlog came out, I was instantly hooked and knew I wanted to make one, but the time is finally right. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to jump in and start my own vlog and take you on that journey. I currently live in Las Vegas and I play poker tournaments for a living. I live with my two Shibas, one granny, and one fiance, who you might recognize. His name is Jesse Sylvia. He was the one who originally taught me how to play poker in the first place, the person who even got me into it. If you sort of recognize him, that's because he took second in the main event. Yeah, the, the main event in the World Series back in 2012. That was my very first experience with poker in the World Series. After that, it was sort of a, a whirlwind for, for, for years. Over the past four years that I've been playing tournaments professionally, I guess you would say, um, I've had some successes. I've had a couple of big scores or medium-ish size scores, I would say. I'm just ready to take it to the next level. So I would say going forward, my goal for this vlog is to hold myself accountable to putting in more volume both on and off the tables in terms of playing and in terms of study time. I go in sort of bursts and breaks, like I said, but I think I need to have longer bursts and shorter breaks if I'm going to sort of take it to the next level. So well, that is the short version, short introduction. I'm sure we will get to know each other a lot better as these vlogs get released and as I feel a little more comfortable in front of a camera. You know, for now, let's just get into the vlog. So the very first event that we're going to play on the vlog is the 1100 MSPT at the Venetian. I love this organization. The MSPT does a great job hosting events and they're always really on top of it. So I always try to make it out to support them when I can. So this weekend, like I said, 1100, it's a 500K guarantee. They usually smash their guarantees. So I was really excited to play. Day 1A ended with me picking up pocket queens and getting it all in verse pocket nines and pocket deuces. The player with pocket deuces is none other than Jordan Christos, who was going all in for like 40 blinds or something like that with all kinds of garbage. Nine five offsuit, seven three offsuit. He was there to gamble and the whole table knew it. So I was really psyched to get in this spot, but he spiked a deuce on the flop <laughs> celebrated in glorious fashion. And we saw ourselves home. I feel super excited for day 1B because the vlogging thing is feeling more natural. You know, like recording while at the table and not worrying about what other people think about me doing that is, is starting to feel a little more comfortable. I am ready to get out there and try to play my best so that I feel like proud of the hands we're talking about. Anyway, I'm feeling really, really good. Let's, let's go. Let's make some hands. Let's play well. Let's run up a stack and kick off this vlog with a... You know, maybe a nice little cash, maybe a final table, a win perhaps. I gotta get out of this car. All right, let's go play poker. So in the first notable hand of this tournament, I did not have my camera out recording, but I included this hand for a reason that you'll find out on the river. From early position, we looked down at 10-8 of spades and raised to 300. The hijack is a middle-aged guy who makes it 800 and the big blind cold calls. We're not going anywhere this deep. We call the flop is 755 rainbow. It checks around to the hijack and surprisingly he checks back. I think immediately I put him on a ace high holding that is just trying to get to showdown. Turn is a nine of hearts. And once the big blind checks to me with our open ender and with the hijack player being pretty capped, we decide to lead pretty big for 2K into 2,500 and the hijack calls. So the big blind gets out of there and we're off to a river heads up. River comes a four of diamonds, so we whiff our straight, but we're sticking to the plan. We are going to try to bluff this guy off of his weak ace high holdings. And as we're reaching for chips, out of the corner of my eye, I see him breathing super heavily and almost talk myself out of it because I think, 
Why would he be breathing so heavily if he was completely uninterested in this hand? Why is he getting all, so, all worked up if he's just gonna fold to anything that I put out there? And then I remember, I'm not Joe Navarro. I'm, I just need to listen to what this guy's line is telling me. And so I stick in a bet, 5K, and he folds. And it's really nice to get a little bluff through, but I only included this hand to show that a lot of live tells come with pattern recognition. So at the beginning of the tournament, I would use live tells as just like a tiny bit of info, but mostly just stick to what their line is telling you they have. The next notable hand we play is when it folds around to the cutoff, who is this super friendly Australian guy that works at Google, whose accent has really uh, caused some confusion and funny moments at the table. He opens the 600. We look down on the button with ace jack offsuit and three bets 1800. The big blind in this hand cold calls and the cutoff comes along as well. We go three ways to the flop of ace 10 four with two clubs. Checks to me and I bet 1500, just the big blind calls. On the turn comes a three of hearts and he checks to me and I check back for some pop control and a little deception. So the river is an offsuit deuce and my opponent leads really small. He leads for 1600. So this is interesting because I think if he had a hand that didn't four bet pre like ace queen or ace king, he would lead bigger on the river. And if he had a hand like pocket tens that slowly play the flop, he would lead bigger. So I almost always think I have the best hand. So now the question is, will I get paid off by worse? I decide on no, I just call and he flips over pocket nines and we take down a medium-ish size pot. In this next hand, we look down at the very pretty queen jack of clubs in early position and we open to 700. Seven. It folds around to the big blind who has been dangerously close to talking about politics at the table and he makes the call. The flop is king nine four rainbow. We got a club in there, so we got a backdoor draw on a gutter. So we bet 700. He pretty much snap calls. And the turn brings a six of spades, so not great. But when he checks to me again, I don't know if it's the fact that we're playing with fire with the, our conversation or what, but I'm feeling pretty spicy and decide to double barrel and try to get him off maybe a four or just some random float that didn't pick up any equity. I bet 2,500, he calls again. Not great. The river brings a three of clubs and he checks yet again. I'm sitting here with queen high. I'm feeling spicy. I bet 5,500 and pray to the poker gods that he'll fold a nine X that got stubborn, some backdoor draw that picked up spades on the turn, or maybe even a really weak king X, which I'm usually not in the business of trying to get a guy to fold a weak king in the very first few levels of a tournament, but here we are. After a really, really long tank, we get the good news as he mucks his cards and claims he had pocket tens. Whew, feels good. Back and forth a few times on that one. <laughs> Across the next few levels, I continue to win a lot of small to medium-ish sized pots, making poker feel pretty easy. And the table is having a lot of fun. There's a lot of laughs. It's just generally a great time. So at this point, the blinds have gone up to 300, 600 with a 600 big blind ante. I look down at King Jack offsuit and open to 1400 and I get three callers. So four ways to a flop, we see Jack, six, five, rainbow. So we flop top pair and when it checks to me, I decide to check and get a little tricky with it considering I'm gonna check four ways a lot. So I wanna have some good hands when I check. It checks around and the turn brings the beautiful offsuit king. When it checks to me again, I'm going for some value now. I bet 4,200 in the 6,500 and just the guy to my left, low jack calls. I've played with this guy a lot, so I'm pretty happy to see him call because I think he'll also call river. The river is a deuce. We bet 11,000 into 14,9, which looking back, I wish I had gone a little bit bigger because even though it might look a little scary to him, I think if he has a king, he's gonna call. And if he has a jack that he's not feeling great with, he might fold to 11K anyway. So if he's folding either way to like a bigger sizing, I should go even bigger to get more out of the kings that wanna call. In this next one, I look down at jack eight of diamonds in the low jack and raise it up to 1800. We get a hijack call and the button calls as well. So going to a flop three ways, we see jack eight X rainbow. I'm first to act, so I lead 3K into 7K. 
not realizing quite how short the button was, or I might have bet a little smaller. Anyway, the hijack folds and the button goes all in for, I think, 6K chips total. We obviously snap call, and when the cards are on the back, we see we're up against queen 10 offsuit for an over and a gutter. On the turn, we get a little bit of a sweat because it's an offsuit king. So now we can hit either a nine or an ace. The river is a jack of clubs. So we win that small all in and continue to build. In one of the last hands that we play before dinner, we pick up pocket kings from early position and open to 1800. The hijack is a really good player and calls off of about an 18 and a half big blind stack. The button comes along as well and we all see a flop of jack eight three rainbow. So I have been checking a lot multi-way out of position. So I decided to check this one as well here. The hijack who says a good player bets 2,500 into 7,400. After the button folds, <clears throat> we kind of have a decision here because off of such a short stack, we can try to play for stacks right here and check raise. But I kind of, I've kind of played myself into a corner here because it's almost a situation where if I had bet kind of small, I look weaker than if I than when I check raise. So I looking back, I really wish I just had C bet small and gone from there. I don't know what I'm really supposed to do here. I just call. The turn is an offsuit four, and when we check again, he bets 4,200 this time. So about a third of the pot. He does he has about the same size behind, so I could check rate, I could check jam him in. But again, I feel like I just don't have a lot of bluffs that do this because you don't have a lot of fold equity and it again goes back to that flop play. I really wish I had just see about the flop. The river is a complete brick and we check and just pray the poker gods that he goes all in and that our flop play isn't too, isn't too egregious <laughs> and that we still make the same amount of money against a jack. Our, the poker gods do not hear our prayers. He snap checks back and we sheepishly turn over our pocket kings and win the pot. I just wanted to point out that this, this is a mental game leak of mine that I kind of already know about, but it's kind of good to, to have a vlog where I can see it very clear as day and have to show you guys these hands where it's really stand out and costing me money. I mean, obviously you could have had a bluff, but if he did have a jack, I just left a little more than 4k on the table and so i just have to remember that even versus good players you still just have two cards and they have two cards and you're playing against each other's ranges in each spot there's no there's no need to play significantly differently against people who you think are really good players and i think that's just a leak of mine that i'm hopefully going to plug um, before the world series starts in a few weeks our run good continues as we get playable hands, hit flops, and win small pots. Very lucky. So after all that run good, we're now sitting on a stack of 78K and we get dealt pocket queens. <laughs> it's just our day today and it feels really, really fun after how the past few tournaments have gone. And in this hand, the hijack jams for 23k and that's some music to our ears we're waiting for the cutoff who calls surprisingly off of about 110,000 in the stack and there's nothing else for us to do we are sub 50 bigs this would be for like a quarter or a third of our stack so it's time to go all in we jam we go all in for 78k when it folds back to the cutoff he thinks for a bit and then lets it go so we are heads up the hijack turns over, ace jack. We are loving this spot, it's a huge pot. This one would be key to putting like a punctuation on, on the day. So the board comes out, queen, 10, five. The turn brings a seven of clubs and I'm having instant flashbacks to day one A in that massive three way all in <laughs> where we lose with pocket queens, wondering why we play tournaments for a living. But. The glorious nine of diamonds hits the river. We didn't have anything to worry about and the huge pocket shipped our way. But now we have some serious first world problems, you guys. I have too many chips to get a proper angle of these cards. So I miss a few hands, but luckily 
we color up and it's on to the last few levels of the night. We're on the last break of the night. I am feeling it, y'all. Live poker tournaments are no joke. <laughs> it's been sitting in the same chair for like 10 hours so far. Sorry if I sound low energy, but it's because I am. These last few levels of the night, everybody's kind of feeling like I am. These are the levels where you really can make a lot of profit. You can really put pressure on people. They just either want to make it to day two, they've locked it up, or they're on the other end of the spectrum where they're just playing pretty marginally. So yeah, these, these, are, these are the times where I kind of just have to like shake it loose. You know, I like to go on these quick walks around the Venetian. It's a beautiful night and just kind of walk it off shake it out stretch it out a little bit and uh rally for the last like two and a half levels of the night all right i'm gonna jump back in good luck us after the whole day's run good last few levels of the night went the complete opposite direction picked up a ton of bad hands and just had to fold basically until this hand happened in the last hand we play of the night we open ace queen off under the gun to 7k under the gun one snap calls the button calls and the big blind starts going into the tank. And in my mind, I'm thinking, damn it. <laughs> He's a solid player, but he had definitely been peeling a lot of big blinds. And in general, like these big blind squeezes, they cost the player a lot of money because when you're out of position, you gotta make these three bets pretty big. So he's committing himself against at least my stack and another player's stack with any reasonable size that he makes it. So while he's in the tank, I'm just already sad about it because even off of, I think I had about 23 big blinds, the way the positions are set up at the table, I raised under the gun and under the gun one was next act and called. And this player in particular had flatted ace king suited and jacks in this exact scenario, um, you know, throughout the day. And this big blind knew that. So he has to give that player some credit for having a hand and I really felt not great about this spot if he were to squeeze and sure enough he does he makes it 37,000 off a stack of I think I had 68k total to start the hand it's not it, he's committed against me so I reluctantly let it go tell me what you think about that spot I'm not really sure like would you have gone with it that was my last hand that I played. The blinds went around again. And guess what, you guys? We found a bag. We only got 58K in chips, so we are pretty short stacked. But, you know, it's really nice to find a bag, even if you have a small amount. Like, you never know what's gonna happen the next day. So I'm, I'm really pumped about it. We're bagging for day two, and I'm just ready to go home and get some sleep. Usually on the morning of day twos, I'll look up the Twitter account of whatever casino I'm playing at and see what the chip counts are, look at where my table is, see who's at my table and what their stacks are, just so that I have a sort of strategy going into the day. When I pull up Twitter this time, we see I'm all the way down, bottom four in chips. 75 people are left and 72 get paid. So we're right on the edge of not being able to cash. So it's a nail biter for sure. Um, I asked Jesse about this and he said, Ah, just fold. So that's the strategy going into the day. Just fold everything. And then I see there's three other super short stacks at my table. So it might be a long bubble because all, you know, three or four out of the lowest 10 chip stacks are all just sitting at the same table, trying to wait each other out almost. So we get to the table, three people, including two of those shorties aren't showing up. We're about 10 minutes into day three two and one of those guys busts because he only had five big blinds to start the day and he just blinds out a few hands go by and i find myself in the hijack with queen jack of hearts and only 11 blinds anyway normally this would be a easy shove but again on this bubble got coach in my ear saying just fold so i let it go it's painful i hate folding those pretty hands so only a few hands later we pick up pocket kings and this is just one of those that we're not folding, even on the bubble. So we go all in for our 11 and a half blinds, I believe. Everyone folds. So we survive for a few more orbits. I think we are on the direct bubble at some point, but it goes pretty quickly and all of a sudden we're in the money. There's 72 left and now the strategy shifts to where you're just trying to build a stack. 
so that you can eventually get to the final table and go on and win. So now that the money bubble bursts, it's time to either spin this short stack up or bust, collect our little min cash and sign up for another tournament. So in this hand, we're in the low jack and we get king queen offsuit. We only have nine big blinds left. So this is a perfectly easy jam. So we do, we ship it in, folds around to the cutoff who snap calls. Everyone else folds. And once his hand is revealed, we see the bad news and we're up against pocket kings. And who has those pocket kings? None other than Jordan Christos himself. <laughs> the board runs out six, five, four. So we're really not in good shape. The ace on the turn seals the deal. We're drawing dead. Deuce on the river changes nothing. And we are headed to the payout cage. All right, GG. So we just busted in 69th place, 72 cash for min cash of I think like 2137. Not bad, not too shabby when you come in and start the day, the fourth shortest stack. So that was great. It's a little stressful coming in when you're that short. I need to put some study time in. These videos have really taught me, uh, I really have some spots that I need to work on. And uh, maybe we'll go over that um, in the next vlog if you guys are interested in um, how I study off the table. So day two is bittersweet. Obviously going into the day with 11 big blinds, you are ecstatic to cash. Getting knocked out by the same dude who you took a bad beat from only two days before didn't feel so great. Those types of things, you just brush them off. They happen a lot in tournaments. Time you guys see this video, the World Series will already be in full swing in Las Vegas. It's a really, really fun time here in the city. I'll be able to take you guys through a tournament player's experience throughout the whole World Series. It's always a fun time. Week one's exciting, week two is more exciting, and then you'll see all the roller coaster of emotions for those middling to end weeks of the, the World Series. I don't wanna jinx it. Maybe, maybe it's gonna be really awesome the whole way through, but either way, you should subscribe to the channel so you can see how it goes for us and leave me a comment about what you would like to see in the future vlogs. This is a brand new like little vlog baby, and so we're gonna take it one step at a time here. Till next time, good luck at the tables.